Without a doubt, being a fireman is one of the most stressful jobs in the world. It's a lot of waiting around, but when you're needed, you have to be ready at a moment's notice to run into a burning building. All of their gear, their helmets, oxygen tanks, and especially their truck is essential to doing the job they do, putting out fires. Nowadays, fire trucks are massive, sophisticated machines with state-of-the-art technology. But has it always been that way? The first fire engine was built by John Brathwaite and John Erickson in Britain in 1829. It was a steam-powered water pump that had to be lugged around by people. Before that, it was commonplace for folks to just leave a bucket of water on their front doorstep in case of a fire. So, I guess this was an improvement? The Erickson Brathwaite fire engine worked. It protected the English Opera House from burning down and also the House of Parliament in 1834. But it didn't last too long before it was destroyed by an angry mob. The first self-propelled fire engine was designed and built in New York in 1841. The engine wasn't as fast or reliable as one pulled by horses, but it did, however, get destroyed by an angry mob. Who are these angry mobs that keep destroying these fire engines, you might be asking? Well, firefighters. At the time, bucket brigade firemen were jealous that the steam-powered pumps could put out a fire faster than a bunch of guys with buckets, and were probably scared they would lose their jobs. So they destroyed what they feared most, and thus continued the folly of man. One invention during the late 1800s changed the firefighting game forever. In 1868, Daniel D. Hayes, a New York City fireman, had the bright idea to put an extending ladder on top of a truck. Not only could firemen reach higher floors to extinguish fires, but people could be evacuated using the ladder as well, instead of jumping out of the window onto those weird trampoline things from cartoons and risk plunging to their deaths. The ladder is synonymous with firefighting now, but back then, it actually took a while for it to be fully adopted. Four years passed before the Hayes ladder was used, and it was only after a massive fire, the Harpending Block Fire of 1871, that San Francisco firefighters realized they could have saved a lot more property and lives they could have reached higher. Horse-drawn fire engines may have been popular at the tail end of the 1800s, but the early 20th century are when fire engines really start looking more like the ones we know today. Popular Mechanics published an article in 1905 detailing how gas-powered fire engines were gaining popularity in England. That same year, a small company out of Springfield, Massachusetts by the name of Knox Automobile Company started selling what some have described as the world's first modern fire engine. A year later, the city of Springfield Fire Department was filled with Knox fire trucks, and then a mob destroyed them all. I'm kidding. There was seating for only one person in the Knox truck, the driver. The rest of the fire brigade had to hang off the side of it like circus bears, and many times they'd be thrown off as the truck sped around tight corners, resulting in injury or sometimes death. By about 1911, all the horse-drawn and steam-powered fire engines had died out or converted to gas power, which vastly outperformed other methods of fire prevention. Steam-powered vehicles took about 20 minutes to heat up, and horses are scared of fire, even the buff ones. Over the next decade, many automotive companies pivoted making gas-powered fire trucks. Companies like Aaron's Fox, LaFrance, and maybe the most popular brand associated with the fire engine, Mack Trucks. In the 1930s, the aerial ladder truck got an upgrade. The development of the turntable ladder allowed it to swivel and allow fire crews to reach areas never before possible. As skyscrapers continued to become taller, this became an essential feature. The design of the fire engine we know of today came about in the 60s. Water pumps were modernized, Turntable ladders came equipped with cherry pickers, and perhaps the most important feature, fully enclosed cabs, became standard. Finally, firemen didn't have to risk their lives hanging off the sides of a truck. We know of fire trucks having pumps, hoses, ladders, and water tanks, but that's just a conventional fire engine. They're still common, but most modern day fire trucks are specialized for specific duties. There are three general fire apparatus types, pumpers, turntable ladders, and specialized fire trucks. Pumpers, known as wagons, are usually defined by permanently installed water tanks, pumps, and hose bodies. The tanks often hold around 1,000 gallons of water, but can be as big as 5,000 gallons, about the capacity of an above-ground pool. Another type of pumper is called a water tender. 
basically a big rolling water tank. They're used more often in rural areas because their pumps can draw water from a stream or lake if a hydrant isn't available. These are extremely useful for washing away chemical spills and drawing water from a flooded area. Although many modern turntable ladders have built-in pumping capabilities and water reservoirs, the three main functions of a ladder truck is to one, allow access to higher levels and a means of escape for firefighters and fire victims, two, provide an elevated water stream, often called a master stream, and three, provide a platform to ventilate a building. The ladder trucks you see with two drivers, one in front and one in the back, are called tillers. A tiller truck is the bastard child of a ladder truck and a semi. The driver in back steers the rear wheels, allowing for insanely tight corners. Trucks like these are essential for navigating tight city streets like those in New York City. There are a ton more specialized fire engines, each with their own specific purpose. There are wildland fire engines, marine rescue units, arson investigation units, turbo extinguishers with jet-powered pumps that can spray 8,000 liters a minute, and my personal favorite, plane crash tenders. These are the ones you see hanging out at airports, ready to go at a moment's notice should the unthinkable happen. One of the most ubiquitous airport firefighting vehicle is the Oshkosh Striker, in service in 70 countries and nine out of 10 airports in North America. There are a few different Strikers, a 4x4, a 6x6, and the big daddy of them all, the Striker 4500 8x8. This thing's bad ass, dude. Since airports don't typically have fire hydrants on the runway, the Stryker 8x8 has a 4,500 gallon water tank and a 630 gallon tank for fire suppressing foam. Powering the Stryker are not one, but two 770 horsepower diesel engines pushing the 124,000 pound vehicle from zero to 60 in 20 seconds. Speaking of engines, fire trucks have some of the burliest mills around. Most fire engine motors have between 400 and 800 horsepower, and some have over 2,500 pounds of torque. Displacement in these engines can range from six liters to 19 liters for specialized vehicles like the Striker. By far, the most powerful fire engine in the world is the Hawaiian Eagle fire truck. This 1940 Ford is powered by two Rolls-Royce Bristol Viper jet engines with a combined 12,000 horsepower and 12,000 pounds of thrust. It broke the Guinness World Record for fastest jet-powered truck at 407 miles an hour. Fully equipped fire trucks can cost anywhere from $500,000 to a million dollars depending on the features. The Pierce Enforcer is a popular conventional fire engine that is in use all around the US. You've probably seen these things at your own fire department. It has an 8.9 liter Cummins L9 engine that puts out 430 horses and almost 1,400 pounds of torque. It's got an Allison transmission, room for eight firefighters, and is rated to hold up to 48,000 pounds of gear. If your department has a little more money to spend, the Detroit diesel DD13 engine is a fun upgrade. The big block 12.8 liter diesel engine makes 525 horses and 1,850 pounds of torque. Fire trucks have come a long way since the horse-drawn carts of the 1800s, but it's nice to know that these life-saving behemoths are just a call away. I love fire trucks. Uh, <laughs> Thanks for watching Wheelhouse. We look at the weird and wonderful world of cars all around us. Hit this yellow subscribe button right here if you don't mind. Check out our new show, Prestado, right here. It's in Spanish, but it has subtitles. I love it. Follow me on Instagram at Nolan J. Sykes. Follow Donut at Donut Media. Uh, be nice. See you next time.